Welcome to today's brief lecture on utopian communities. Between the 1820s and 1840s, uh, people who believed in the perfectibility of the social and political order created a lot of utopian communities. They were experimental communities and communal societies based on utopian communities because uh, they were called utopian communities because they provided blueprints for what they thought would be an ideal society. They had a lot of variation. Some places went full on religion. Some places said absolutely no religion whatsoever. Uh, but the first, or at least one of the earliest of these perfectionist communities, was popularly known as the Shakers. They were founded in 1776 by a woman named Anne Lee, who actually is referred to as Mother Anne Lee. She was an English immigrant. She believed that the millennium was at hand and that the time had come was for, for people to renounce sin. The millennium being uh, the thousand-year time after the return of Christ when everything was supposed to be peaceful. So Shaker communities regarded their male and female members as equals. Uh, the sexes, both uh, male and female, served as elders and deacons, and they tried to live a lot like the early Christians. They adopted communal ownership of property and a way of life that emph emphasized a lot of simplicity. Their dress was very simple and uniform. Their architecture was very simple as well. Their uh, furniture, which is something that you can actually see today, was very uh, devoid of any ornamentation. It's very simple, also very uniform. There were no curtains on windows, no carpets on the floors, no pictures on the walls. Everything was very pure and elegant in its form. They're also known, as you can imagine, for their shaking, their religious stances, and they were also known for their uh, abstinence, their total uh, celibacy. That was part of their entire movement. Uh, their religious fervor should be expressed, they thought, through the head, heart, and mind. So their religious, their ritual uh, practices included shaking, shouting, and dancing. And they also believed that intercourse itself was the basic cause of all human sin. So they adopted strict rules regarding celibacy. You might actually wonder how did they think that this movement would continue. So they uh, adopted orphans and they admitted volunteers in order to replenish their numbers. Today, of course, they have all but died out. Another uh, effort was Robert Owen's experimental community in New Harmony, Indiana. It reflected the influence of the Enlightenment ideas, at least the thought behind the Enlightenment ideas. He was a Scottish industrialist, and he had a very paternalistic idea. He was uh, very troubled by the social consequences of the Industrial Revolution. He uh, was inspired, or at least he, he um, thought that people were shaped by their environment. So he purchased a site in Indiana where he sought to establish communal ownership of property, something you can see common through all of these, and abolish religion. The marriage ceremony was reduced to one single sentence, and children were raised outside of their natural parents' homes. This is something that you actually see as far back as the writings of the Greek philosopher Plato, where people are actually, uh, children were raised outside of the home. This community lasted for only three years. He actually had about 40 different uh, utopian communities based upon the ideas of a French theorist named Charles Fourier. Uh, he helped, um, or at least hoped, to eliminate poverty throughout the establishment of scientifically organized cooperative communities called phalanxes. Each of them was supposed to be set up like a joint stock company, and profits were to be going to be divided according to the amount of mon money that they had invested. Uh, also, their skill and their labor was supposed to affect the amount of money that they got uh, as well. Women received equal job opportunities, equal pay, and equal participation in the decision-making. Uh, also, equal right to speak in public assemblies as well. One of these communities, uh, one of these phalanxes, actually lasted for about 18 years, but most of them were largely um, unsuccessful. <clears throat> um Probably, though, the most successful and most notorious of these was an experimental colony uh, created by a man named John Humphrey Noyes. It was the Oneida community. Uh, he was a lawyer who was converted in one of the um, revivals during the Second Great Awakening, and he believed that the millennium would occur only when people strove to become perfect through an immediate and total cessation from sin. <clears throat> he established perfectionist communities. One of these is in Oneida, New York, and it actually existed for quite a while. Uh, they practiced a communal ownership of property, again, a very recurrent theme through all of these uh, utopian societies, 
and complex marriage. Now here is where things get a little weird uh, by today's standards. Complex marriage involved the marriage of each and every member of the community to each and every member of the opposite sex. So you had exclusive emotional or sexual attachments were expressly forbidden in this type of society. Uh, relations were arranged through an intermediary in order to protect a woman's individuality and to give her a choice in the matter. So these are some of the ideas that they tossed around with these uh, utopian societies. Um, again, you see very common types of things. You see communal ownership of property. Uh, in this case, uh, emotional in the Oneida community, the emotional attachments were supposed to be expressly forbidden uh, as well. That's another thing that you actually see uh, reflected in a lot of other uh, writings that are based on Plato's original writing, uh, the Republic from the uh, 3rd century or 4th century BCE. So it goes back that far. If you've read A Brave New World, some of these things might sound familiar as well. Um, after the Civil War, the Oneida community uh, conducted a lot of experiments in eugenics, however. So that's one of the things that, um, that was more or less controversial. And what eugenics is, it's selective control of mating uh, to improve the hereditary qualities of children. At least that's the idea behind it. Noyes actually wound up leaving the community in 1879 and then fled to Canada to escape prosecution for adultery. But as late as the early 1990s, you even have descendants of the original community could be found working in the Oneida Silver Works, which is a company that still exists today. Uh, after Noyes departed, um, the Oneida Silver Works, which he helped to create, uh, actually was form reformed itself as a corporation. So that's just a few... Um, few ideas behind some of these utopian societies. I uh, hope you found it as interesting as I typically do, and have a good day.